Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish. Exactly. And this is part 63, gold. I call it old and dirty gold. This is the way I typically paint gold on miniatures if I'm trying to get a more older, worn out appearance on the gold and, and more dirty. Once again, I recommend priming the model black since black produces the best uh, just base coat color for, for metallics in general on models. Now, we're going to use the same three gold colors that we did in the previous one, Balthazar, Gehenna's, and Auric Armor Gold. But to create the dirty or worn out appearance, we're not only going to change the way that we highlight, but we're also going to use a combination of shades. Uh, one to one mix of Agrax Earthshade and Non-Oil. The Non-Oil produces that black tinge, but then the Agrax Earthshade being a brown, and we're technically painting on like, metallic browns, uh, just the two combined really create that older, worn out appearance that we're going for. So once again, we'll start off by thinning down our Balthazar Gold for our base color, since it tends to go on a little bit uh, thick. So we're gonna put in our palette and add some thinner medium to it. That way we get a nice thin consistency, but it doesn't screw up the metallics. I don't recommend thinning down your metallics with water. It uh, screws up the consistency pretty badly. So I recommend using a medium if possible. That way we get it to a nice thinner consistency and we can apply it in a nice sparing fashion over our Necron model. So as I said, I'm just going to take it and apply it to over all the armor parts of the model, getting a nice coverage before proceeding to the shades. As I said, this is, a, this is how I typically paint golds in most of my paint jobs because I really like the older, more worn out appearance on golds, not the very, very bright and shiny golds. Since most of these guys have seen battle, they shouldn't be in pristine condition in my opinion, but uh, I showed how to do it in a more shiny, less old appearance in the previous one, and today I'll be going to my other method. The key is when you're base coating metallics, as with other base coats, is make sure you have a nice solid foundation before proceeding to the shades. Because if you do not, uh, these metallics will show really badly if you have a, a thin area over a black primer. As you can see, we have a nice shine to it. Of course, now we're going to remove that shine, but uh, the Balthazar Gold is nicely applied to the miniature. So now we're going to take a one-to-one -one mix of non-oil and Agrax Earthshade, which is going to create a dirty brown shade and we're going to apply that to the miniature. Since golds are essentially metallic browns, it's a great combination to use a brown on, plus it just, it will really dull down the metallics. So this is said to create that older, dirtier appearance so that it's not uniformly bright and shiny. And with this mix, I did not add water. I really wanted it to be heavy and gucky on this, on this model, so I just took it, uh, put it in my palette, one to one mix of them both, and applied it directly to the miniature. And with all shades, make sure that when you're applying to the miniature, completely apply it to a surface before proceeding to the next step, because otherwise you'll get, uh, if you do like half the head and then you go to the body and before you go to the other half of the head, you're going to notice that it will start to dry and you'll get some lines that may not be able to be removed in further highlights, or will have to be removed in further highlights, so it gives you extra work. Since it's dry, as you can see, it's very dull we've created that older, dirtier appearance. It, it's an old, dirty gold now. So now it's time to just highlight up a little bit with our, um, we're gonna still highlight and create a bit of a shine, but it's gonna be a lot less shiny as you can see in the, from the previous tutorial. And there's gonna be areas where we're gonna leave that older, uh, worn out appearance. So we're gonna take our Gehenna's Gold. And Gehenna's Gold and Orc Armor Gold are both, um, they're not very solid colors in the sense that they do have a bit of opaqueness to it. They, they um, they will allow the, the dirty appearance from the base coat to shine through them slightly, and that's what we're going for. So instead of doing a dry brush, we're going to do um, just kind of an overbrush highlight over the areas in which my light source is hitting. That way we're gonna create the nice, uh, a nice gradient of golds going towards the areas that the light source is hitting. And we're gonna leave a lot of the areas dirty and uh, older looking. 
So as you can see, I focus on the upper parts, the arms, the head, the collarbone, the tops of the shoulder pads on his back, uh, a little bit on the legs, but only the parts facing upwards as well as the feet. I'm going to leave the legs facing downwards, more of that dirty gold appearance. that my lights are just hitting while keeping the rest of the areas uh, the darker worn out colors as well as what even when I'm highlighting it, as you can see I'm leaving gaps of the of the shade because they just add character to the model and, and create that older dirty appearance that we're going for and this is really how I like to paint gold and then we're gonna take our final gold color because uh, as you can see after the first gold there's still a lot of the um, Balthazar gold shining through on on the model it does have some shine to it, but it's just not extremely bright and new, which is kind of what we're going for. And I'll take the Guinness Gold, which is a nice bright yellow gold, and just apply it to the surfaces at the very top of the miniature to create a nice gradient of colors. As you can see, the tops of the foreheads, the face, the shoulder pads, just the arm parts that are facing really vertically straight up. And that's it. That's to create a nice gradient of golds and a much older appearance, as you can see. It doesn't have that really nice bright tint like it will have some shine to it definitely because we're using you know metallics but uh, it will not just be purely shiny and new like our previous tutorial so as I mentioned use your light source as a reference because I'm as you see mine is coming from the top and above so I'm just going to tack it at that angle so at the um, I'm piling up on the shoulder pads to create a nice gradient to the very tops of them and I'm not going to focus much on the back because most of the parts of the back are not facing really the light source. Now I'm just doing the top of the head. I left the sides of the head, the belt is our gold shade. That way it creates a nice shade to them. And that's it. And now he's done. So that is how I paint my, my golds, as you can see. There's a, a really large gradient to them and it does have a lot of shades on the recesses along the edges and uh, in the parts facing downward so it really does create that gradient and it gives it that and all of these layerings really do combine for a much older worn out appearance so this is a, this is how i typically paint my golds i really like painting golds in this fashion if i'm not using an alcohol based gold so thank you very much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned for part 64, which is just around the corner next week as always. But if you don't want to wait for next week and you want to see it earlier, check out The Warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. Where not only will we get to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes, you get to see dozens of painting tutorials, battle reports, face-off episodes, airbrush series, and just some awesome board gaming content. So go ahead and check out The Warp. I think you'll love it. So thank you very much once again for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.